Uh, I would like to thank the organizers uh, for inviting to talk, although now I'm local. I just realized, uh, I just realized uh, you know, not long, I think two hours ago, my talk, the title of my talk could be as well, uh, One Dimensional Representations, uh, Copying Xin, are the most uh, non-generic guys. <laughs> okay. So of course I will actually ex explain what this means later, but uh, at this moment we'll just take this uh, title uh, as it is. Um, since I think at, at this point of the time everybody is a bit tired, maybe our audience is thinking about going, going back home earlier. So I will keep my uh, talk hopefully uh, lightweighted. So I think my goal will be very simple-minded. So basically the situation is like this. So we have, uh, let's say you have uh, three kids, okay? Uh, one, two, and three, okay? Now you have several amples, okay? How are you gonna distribute, let's say you have uh, five amples. You cannot possibly achieve this uh, equal distribution. So you have to distrib distribute your amples to three kids, okay? What's the rational behind any reasonable good distribution there, okay? Of course, if you only have one ample, which is in the case of linear algebraic group, then you might get the kids to fight against each other. The strongest one will get that unique ample. Okay? But what if you have, let's say, uh, five amples now? Okay? Okay. So uh, the first case, how many amples you will get? That will be basically the question I'm going to uh, ask. Okay? Although the question takes this uh, simple form, I hope the answer could still uh, cast some interest. Okay? So uh, that will be the main result. Uh, only one theorem today, okay? So uh, basically I have to uh, show you there's some equality involving this uh, so-called Whittaker models that several people in previous talks have already introduced. Okay? But, but I, would, I will give a proper definition. So on the left-hand side, there are two uh, things I have to introduce. This is a representation and the Whittaker model of a re representation. And on the right-hand side, I have to introduce these uh, two representations of the vowel group, okay? So this is nothing but the pairing. Okay. So the questions will be uh, those are cousins of uh, this equality. So there will be uh, various variants of this uh, equality. Okay. So uh, after introducing uh, this uh, covering group and uh, talk about the main result, I will raise up several questions. Hopefully, I uh, might um, give some interest uh, here. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me fix uh, some notations. So, uh, for me, I always look at this uh, uh, split collective reductive group. Okay, I fix a borrow subgroup, and you will have this uh, so-called root datum of G. Okay, so this Y, this uh, co-character like this, which is nothing but this uh, group of uh, one parameters. And I have the dual of this uh, co-character like this, which is the, the character like this. Okay, I will pick this uh, set of simple roots because I have fixed my borrow subgroup. Okay, so of course I'll have my uh, set of roots, uh, set of groups. That will be basically the pool of notations I'm going to use throughout my talk. Okay, so uh, although uh, I think several people have already mentioned this covering group, I would like to uh, supply and supplement another uh, viewpoint, which is already mentioned in Kaplan's talk. This uh, viewpoint of uh, brightness continue. Actually, the setup is quite uh, simple. Uh, so we start with this uh, co character letters. Okay, so it's a free Arvinian group of an array. You will take uh, some uh, integer value quadratic form over there. You want it to be vowel invariant. So the work of Beniskin Dini basically give you some uh, extension of your fixed split reductive group G by this uh, K2. Okay, K2 you can view it as this uh, Milner K2 if you want to evaluate and feel. Okay, so it's many. Meaning it's generated by symbols like F cross, tensor uh, F cross, modulo certain relations over there. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to uh, give too much details about the structure of this uh, covering, but uh, suffice it to say, the structure of this is governed by several uh, basic facts. The first one is uh, we are considering central covering. Okay, that's very important. Second um, is that the covering group splits over the unipotent. Actually, the splitting is uh, G equivalent. Okay, uh, with respect to the conjugation action. Okay, so the role this quadratic form plays will be it governs the group law on the covering torus. Okay, so why this is uh, uh, reasonable is because while well, this group 
is more or less generated by just a uh, unipotent and the to current torus. Okay. Once you understand the unipotent elements, which actually take care of themselves, uh, if you understand the current torus, basically you understand the covering group. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, a more concrete uh, example will be if you look at, uh, let's say, uh, SL2 or just SP2R, okay, then uh, you could actually understand all those uh, vowel invariant quadratic form on this co lattice. It is actually classified by an integer. Okay? The recipe is quite simple. You, you pick out this uh, quadratic form, you evaluate at any uh, short co rule. If they simply lay all the roots, they have the same names, and then it does not matter which one you pick. Okay? But in general, you, uh, you, you pick out the short one. Okay? By this uh, vowel invariance property, it uniquely lays down your quadratic form if you are going from the right hand side to the left hand side. Okay? Uh, even more down to earth example is this uh, symplectic group, uh, SP2R. If you, uh, if you draw the Deakin diagram for the, for the code roots, okay? you, you look at the short one, you assign negative one, or maybe you assign one. Okay? You'll get some uh, extension of uh, SP2R by K2. Okay? So this is the desired one, but desired one, I mean, the topology group. Topological covering arising from this uh, covering will be, this is the double cover, will be the usual metaphoretic double cover, okay? So by saying topological cover, we mean this, okay? Since we have this uh, K2, as was alluded earlier, we have this K2, uh, K2 extension of G, you can evaluate at this uh, F points. F is a fixed uh, non archimedean local field, okay? Now you, have, you actually have a short exact sequence, CT and the bottom. Now, now you have this uh, helper symbol. You can actually push this via the helper symbol such that it takes value in some uh, finite cyclic group here, assuming this uh, field contains the full group of uh, a through the unity over there. Okay? So uh, as I say, this quadratic form actually governs the group law of this covering torus. In what sense? Now, uh, if you consider the bilinear form naturally associated to this quadratic form, they, the commutator on this covering torus actually descend, uh, descend to uh, the torus. Uh, it is given, exactly given by the Hilbert symbol and raised above this uh, quadratic form. Evaluated, sorry, this bilinear form evaluated at the two uh, elements inside the co-character uh, co group. Okay. So uh, by genuine representation, we just mean um, we would like this uh, central subgroup mu n to be acting by a fixed embedding. Okay? Of course, you may be considering the action of this uh, mu n is trivial, then that means essentially you are considering representation of G because it factors through uh, this uh, G2 time of mu n. Okay? Uh, okay? So uh, now the definitely the first case we should be looking at is this uh, covering torus case. Okay? The representation theory of covering torus is uh, well understood, okay? So the construction of any uh, genuine representation there is via this uh, process of uh, stone volume man. So first of all, you pick out a, a genuine character of the center of this covering torus, okay? What you do now is you choose some maximal Arbini subgroup, okay, of your covering torus, then you extend that uh, genuine character. Okay. So now you do this uh, induction. So now we know that uh, this uh, process will give you this uh, irreducible genuine representation there. In fact, uh, it is guaranteed that any irreducible genuine representation of this current torus arises in this fashion. Okay, so uh, that justifies, I hope, the symbol we use here. Okay. Uh, moreover, from this uh, description, we know that uh, if you look at arbitrary genuine irreducible representation of a carbon torus, you know they all have the same uniform dimension, which is of course uh, equal to the index of this uh, maximum Arvinian subgroup inside the carbon torus. Okay? Uh, it is Heisenberg type group, so actually uh, the other index is a square, and uh, these two are equal. Okay? Well, but one question still remains from this uh, description is, what is the center? of this carbon torus, and what is this uh, maximum albinian group, okay? There, there, there are choices involved uh, in choosing this maximum albinian group, but the center can be described uh, simply in this way. So now you have to do some uh, surgery on this uh, co lattice. Why? 
So you cut out this co-character lattice by picking out a sub lattice uh, in this fashion. Okay. Uh, now you could look at well, you have this inclusion, and then you could tensor f cross. You get this isogeny. Okay. Whatever the image is, it will be a subgroup of the linear torus. Okay. But this covering torus subjects onto this linear torus. So you look at the pre-image of this thing, whatever it might be. Okay. That will be actually be giving you the center. Okay. Meaning essentially, meaning this sub lattice controls the center. And this lattice Y controls the covering torus. Okay. That, uh, that, I think that may be that might be the message you want to convey. Okay. Uh, in a special case, you are considering um, for instance, if uh, in a tame case, you can you can actually choose a very special maximum Arbenian subgroup, which is the you know just pick the center and then pick the uh, uh, OF rational points. Okay. In this case, you know the dimension can be computed by computing this uh, finite Arbenian group. Okay, this is a Y mod Y Q N. Actually, this guy will play a very important role today in my talk. Okay, so. Uh, now let me introduce a uh, Whitaker uh, space and then raise up the question. So, uh, <clears throat> so by saying Whitaker functional, I mean uh, since we have picked out this uh, oral subgroup and we know this uh, unipotent subgroup splits, we will identify this as a subgroup of the covering group. So you you pick out some non-degenerate character there. Okay, you could define the Whitaker functional of any genuine representation as usual. Just means. You know, the, the action of the unipotent are any factor this valid uh, additive character. Okay, usual definition. So uh, I will consider the complex vector space of Whitaker function on some pi. Okay. So here's a, I would say, here's a grand question on uh, Whitaker models or Whitaker functionals. The question is if you fix your covering group, okay, which might be a linear group because you might take your n to be 1. Okay. If you fix your covering group, then you get actually this. Uh, map from this uh, set, infinite set, to uh, natural numbers, meaning given by the dimension. Okay. Put it another way, you may consider this uh, Grothendieck group generated you know, by those uh, you guys. Since the Whittaker uh, functional is, is, uh, is an exact uh, functor, you actually get a group homomorphism from this uh, Grothendieck group to uh, integers. Now the question is, can you describe this uh, group homomorphism? Okay. For instance, on the generators, and what, what, can, what can, you, can you get? And uh, um, even more subtle is the question is, can you single out? Can you, if you look at the fiber of this uh, group homomorphism over one, okay, can you describe that? Okay. Of course, that's a very delicate question. If you look at like, temper, uh, I mean, the temper packet conjecture and also the gross parser. Um, so, uh, so now the question is, what do we know? <laughs> of course, for linear group, uh, I think we know Quite a bit. Uh, this is going to be a selective review. I will be concentrating on the covering group. But in any case, first of all, in the linear case, if you you know just look at n is one, okay, it is the linear group. Then we know this uh, multiplicity. We know the dimension is always bounded above by one, uh, which is a good thing. Okay. Now uh, we also know that this dimension, of course, by the uh, work of Rodeo, I think um, back to like forty years ago. We know it is actually the coefficient of the uh, of the uh, maximum. If you look at the heterogeneous character expansion, you look at the coefficient in front of this uh, uh, regular, the maximum uh, unipotent orbit. You know it is exactly this uh, dimension of the functionals. Okay. Uh, uh, one remark uh, about like it seems this is a technical question, like the dimension, right? One remark about why this is important is because. Uh, in this uh, Lan Shahidi uh, method of L function, this multiplicity one actually lies in the heart. It is very crucial because only with this multiplicity you can factorize the global uh, integral into local ones, and then local ones you can compute. But uh, for covering group, you, you don't have this. Okay. But on the other hand, uh, well, for some ranking server method L function, you also need this uh, uniqueness. It's not true that you need this uniqueness for all, but for quite a large class of uh, ranking server methods. Okay. Since uh, Ian Kepler already talked about this uh, in his lecture, I will not uh, dwell on this. Okay. So, uh, so let me mention some uh, ex existing work on the covering uh, group case regarding our knowledge on the dimension. Okay. On this uh, naive question. So, uh, well, 
For principle series, we, we, we uh, have understood. The reason is because uh, for principle series, by, this is, uh, we have this equality, and the first equality comes from uh, heredity, Rodeus heredity, and the second is just a computation I, I mentioned just now, okay? because there's no uh, unipotent for carbon torus. So we really have that. And we have gotten some knowledge for um, by the finitis. Actually, a priori, it's not clear in its finite dimension. But, you know, for covering of GLR, uh, I think it is going back to the work of Kester Patterson. Perhaps earlier, but I'm not sure uh, the earliest uh, work of this, but okay, uh, recently, uh, Patel, by generalization, the work, generalization, by generalization of the work of mockley was portrayed actually uh, showed that uh, it is finite. As a very trivial consequence of his work. In his thesis, uh, we have also gained some knowledge uh, about this dimension, particularly for like theta representation and this uh, depth zero supercapacitor representation. Uh, the, um, we also know that uh, I think this is for glory. Uh, it's a for glory results uh, to experts. We know that this uniqueness, uniform bound, this uniqueness uh, is true as long as you know that the to covering torus is abini, meaning it is equal to its center. Uh, I think it was for glory, but uh, we couldn't find a proof, so we supplied a, a short proof. Basically, by, uh, by proving that if your covering torus is abini, you have this uh, chevalier standby evolution. So the classical theory could be carried over. Uh, a remark I don't make sure this, uh, although we are just restricting our attention on this uh, Whittaker model, actually you could be considering general, for instance, uh, general representation. What is the uh, uh, unipotent opposite support of, of that representation? We know more on theta representation. There, uh, there has been quite some work on this. For instance, uh, Yuan Qi, he did some work on this. Uh, uh, unipotent support for theta for covering of GLR. Okay, he proved this. Uh, there, there, there are some uh, conjecture of Faber against Burr on the case of a uh, symplectic group. Okay, what the picture should be. Uh, basically, it's combinatorial, I should say. Okay, but uh, the proof is uh, non-trivial. Also, the um, uh, in the thesis work of uh, Spencer Leslie. Okay, I think these people are all in the audience except uh, probably uh, David Ginsburg. Okay, uh, in the thesis of work of uh, Spencer Leslie, he actually proved this. Uh, this is a crucial identity because he, he actually used this uh, to prove a form of a generalized theta lifting for degree four cover of sp 2 by using degree four cover of sp 2 Okay, so, uh, so uh, today in my talk, I would like to concentrate more on this uh, so-called unramified uh, principle series, okay? So uh, for this, uh, the, the setting will be, um, well, if you look at some, uh, let's say, hyperspatial maximal uh, compact subgroup, suppose it splits, okay, you could be looking at uh, this uh, k unramified representation. We know every k unramified representation can be embedded in some principal series, okay, uh, such that the, the character here, this character is a character of the center of the covering torus, and this small i chi is this uh, finite dimensional representation of your covering torus I described just now, okay? So you could be looking at uh, characters such that it is unramified, okay? You will have this uh, unramified principle series for covering group, okay? And uh, just now I already showed that the dimension is equal to this uh, quotient. Now I'm giving it another name, nothing changes, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different name, okay? This uh, x, script x uh, q n, this is in some sense, this is in some sense the modular space of the space of uh, our ramified principle series. Okay, the dimension is equal to this. So now the obvious question is this. Okay? So now suppose your principle series uh, is reducible. Okay, it breaks off into several pieces. Okay, how the dimension of each piece okay, is going to be distributed among um, this. Suppose you have the dimension of this uh, whole principle series is uh, five, so it's the, the problem of this uh, distributing apple to three kids. The dimension is five, okay? And now this principle series breaks into three pieces, okay? So uh, what the distribution of the dimension should be? Okay. Is it one, one, three, or is it two, one, two, or one? Yeah. That would be the question, okay? So, uh, uh, 
For my talk, I will be concentrating on this uh, so-called regular unramifier uh, principle series. Okay, the definition is exactly as in a linear case. You have this vowel group acting on your, your central character, and then you are asking that the stabilizer is trivial. Okay, so for each root here, I could I could define this linear character. This is a linear character by some uh, um, formula here. The highlight is that uh, this is your running variable. And the highlight is, uh, well, this is something in your, your center of occurrence. I think along the talk, uh, along uh, my talk, uh, it does not hurt. Actually, it's very helpful to take, for instance, n to be just one. In that case, we have everything is linear, okay? So you can check the assertion for linear group. Okay. So uh, now we have this set of uh, so-called reducibility, just defined exactly as in a linear case, okay? So, once you have this uh, set of reducibility, it is a, a very beautiful theorem of uh, Rodia. A proof for linear case, but you know the proof carries over to complete case. So it says if you look at regular unramified principle series, how are you going to parametrize or classify the irreducible constituents? The recipe is very simple. You look at this uh, set of reducibility. Okay, this is the power set. Okay, it says the irreducible constituents will be corresp corresponding to exactly subset of this uh, set of reducibility. Okay. So, uh, of course, it's character character characterized by this property, nothing but, well, if you compute the Jacquin module of this uh, pi s, okay, it is exactly determined by the indexing var elements, okay, which can be written down explicitly in this way. So um, uh, you have all those uh, descendereta for like, you know, if you want a square integral ball, what the situation should be. In this case, your set of reducibility should have the um, maximum possible size. And you should be looking at this, uh, uh, this uh, constituent attached to the empty set. Uh, you also have uh, a, a, a characterization of temper constituent of this uh, unramified uh, principle series uh, in the same spirit over there. And uh, you know which guide is unramified. Okay? The one, the top one, so to speak, the one attached to the maximum subset of the set of reducibility. Okay? So, uh, so our remark is, this is very algebraic. Okay? Everything is, you know, you are describing subset of a set of reducibility, but it could be converted into something geometry. So the picture is here. I could be using the same pointer here, okay? So uh, let's say in this case, your set of reducibility is the whole set of simple uh, roots, okay? Now you, the, red, the two red lines here, in this case, I have this uh, phi chi to be nothing but uh, alpha one, alpha two. This is so-called uh, uh, exceptional character. So now I will be uh, drawing in this uh, root space. Okay? This will be this will be the kernel of uh, alpha one. Okay? This will be the kernel of alpha two, view as function on the root space. I will cut off this root space into uh, four portions. Okay? okay, four components. Each component I call them uh, gamma s, attached to your uh, favorite s you pick up. Okay, so this will be your gamma uh, empty. Okay. Uh, this will be the uh, gamma, uh, I mean the maximum set, gamma attached to, the component attached to the maximum subset, meaning your full set of reducibility, and you have other two uh, subsets, alpha one and alpha two. So this is purely geometry. You also have analogous uh, picture for uh, SP4 there. Okay. So uh, once you get this uh, parametrization, now the question is, what's the Whittaker dimension? Okay, so uh, to uh, to state the theorem, let me introduce a uh, let me introduce uh, two representations of the vowel group. Okay, so the first representation of the vowel group will be this uh, so-called twisted vowel action. Okay, so you 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 pick out the half sum of all positive co roots. You twist your usual vowel action generated by the reflections. Okay, by this uh, zone. Okay. okay. Uh, you have some well-defined action of your vowel group on the on the on the co-catalytic. Okay. 
Uh, remember, you have this uh, sublattice there, and this sublattice is a vowel invariant with respect to the usual action. So now, actually, this twisted action gives you a well-defined twisted action on this uh, quotient space, which, as I mentioned, is the, so to speak, the modular space of the, of the vertical space of unramified principles. Okay? So you get a very simple permutation representation. It's a permutation representation there. So this will be our first representation, which is universal, meaning it does not depend on the S, it's, it's there. Okay? So uh, um, well, I would like to say uh, like two remarks of, about why this uh, twisted vowel action appears. One reason is, for instance, it uh, actually appears in the description, in the construction of uh, this vowel group multiple duration series given by uh, Chinta and Gallis. Uh, the construction involves this twisted action as some uh, Gauss sum over there. Okay? Uh, for us, uh, the reason is also because uh, ultimately, in fact, this twisted action appears when you try to describe this induced map on the vertical space of RME5 principle series when you, uh, when you are inducing from the intertwining operator. Okay? So really you can parameter, this, this will be a, once you choose proper basis for the two finite dimensional vector space, you will get a matrix. Okay? You can describe that matrix, the entries of that matrix by considering this a uh, twisted action. Okay. That's why this, this, uh, this guy appears there. Okay, so the second represent, representation of your vowel group, inevitably you will, you will be depending on your, uh, on, your, on your set S, okay? a subset of the set of reducibility. Okay? So the second representation will be coming from this uh, cash stylistic uh, representation. Will be a cash stylistic representation, or rather a, a, a sum of cash stylistic representation. I'm, I'm not going to give too much detail since it's a very much uh, big theory there. But it, is sufficient, but it is sufficient to say, I mean, uh, the story, a little bit story is cash stylistic. Um, they actually partition the vowel group okay, into several uh, components, if you like to say that. They are not partitioning it randomly, of course. Okay? They, are partition they are partitioning the vowel group into several, they call it right cells or left cells. Yeah, There's a symmetric notion. Partition it into right cells, and each cell actually bears a representation of the vowel group. And the way of partitioning comes from considering this a uh, cash net polynomial. Roughly speaking, they are using this cash net polynomial to, to measure how close two vowel elements are. Okay, if they are close enough, you put them in the same cell. If they are close, for instance, the trivial, the, the trivial vowel element and the longest one, okay, they are too far away from each other. There's no way you can put them together. When you look at the cash net uh, polynomial. Uh, okay. So there are various applications of this uh, cash net theory as some of our experts might know better. Okay. Also recently in the work of, for instance, uh, Bump and Lakasuchi, actually they show you know, this uh, cash stand lucid polynomial appears in describing certain transitional metrics from the standard basis to this uh, customer basis. We are considering your horrific uh, representations. Okay. For us, for our purpose, the key observation will be nothing but, well, if you look at this, uh, regular unramified principle series, okay, you look at each constituent, which, each of which corresponds to a subset of reducibility. Now you look at this uh, WS, which gives you the, the, the set of uh, twisted characters appearing in the Jacquin module of your pi S. Okay? It, turns out, it turns out actually this set is not a random set. This set is a set of uh, castellistic right seals. Okay? Since it's a, it's a union of uh, castellistic red seals, so naturally you will have a castellistic representation. You will have a sum of castellistic representations attached to this uh, subset over there. Okay? Well, this is very abstract, but in fact, uh, luckily we have a very concrete description of this uh, representation. If you look at the form of this representation, it is like inclusion and exclu exclusion principle, essentially. Uh, one example I would like to highlight, for instance, is uh, suppose you have the full set of simple roots to be the set of reducibility. Okay? In this case, you have the top piece and you have the bottom piece. The bottom piece is here. 
and the top piece is here. Okay. So what are the two cast loose representations attached to these two cells? Okay. Well, the, the bottom one will be the trivial representation of your vowel group, and the top one will be the character, will be the sign of your vowel group. Okay. And um, okay, before I say the main theorem, let me introduce something technical. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, basically I would like to split my class of covering groups into two caps. One is good, and the other is not. Okay. But the good one I call it uh, saturated. Basically it says, uh, well, you always have this, uh, you look at each simple root, you always have this uh, inclusion. Okay. By the definition of this uh, n alpha, okay, whatever it, uh, it was. Uh, but now if it is equal, okay, then I call it saturated. Okay. So uh, a more uh, intuitive understanding of this is, for instance, if you look at covering of SL2 or maybe uh, SP2R, you know, uh, simply collected group, the covering group is saturated if only if this is a dual group, okay, I think introduced by the vet already. This dual group, in the sense of uh, uh, Bunker, Burley, Sinkum, uh, Rich, Malamara, and Westman, this are joined, okay? Meaning, for instance, if you look at the degree uncover of SL2, okay, this covering group is saturated if only if this n is odd, okay? Of course, n could be one. If n is one, you can for arbitrary group. If n is one, uh, it is always it is always saturated. Meaning linear group is always uh, saturated. Okay. So now here's the theorem. Theorem says if you want to compute the dimension of vertical functionals of arbitrary constituent of your regular uh, ramified principle series, it is it is actually given by this uh, pairing of the two vowel group representations. Okay. The left one is this uni universal permutation representation. The right one is this uh, cache uh representation. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, give a very sketchy proof here. Just uh, three steps. Okay. After that, we might look at some examples. Okay. So uh, it, the first is this reduction. So just now, uh, I might. Let me just go back two slides. Just now you saw this, uh, you saw this uh, inclusion, exclusion, exclusion principle, essentially, for this uh, Castellustic representation, okay? Uh, so now, the first step of the proof says you also have this uh, inclusion and exclusion principle for the representation of the PRD group, okay? So meaning exactly these two principles, they align properly. Now you may want to say, once you have this, it is sufficient to say one of the, these, these pieces, okay? The Whitaker dimension is the correct one, okay? Meaning you want to show this. So why is this data be explained a little bit? So now uh, you have this uh, full set of redu redu reducibility. Now let's say you pick out a subset. Since I'm assuming this is a subset of uh, simple cool roots, okay? And this, so this will be a subset of simple cool roots. So you all have this uh, parabolic subgroup over there, okay? So if you consider the principal series on this uh, covering levy, okay, this set will be, again, a set of reducibility for that principal series on the levy, okay? And attached to the full set, you, uh, the full set, you will have this constituent of the principal series on the levy covering group there, okay? This is this uh, so-called theta representation. Now you pick out this uh, re representation on the parabolic, then you deduce. Okay. So, um, but now you see, once you look at this formula, I think there are, there are two operations one can do on each side of them. The left-hand side, clearly you would like to apply this uh, rhodial heredity. Okay. And the right-hand side, you would like to apply this uh, Fubini reciprocity. Okay. That's the second step. So now it reduces to this uh, simpler formula, which says if you look at the theta representation, which is nothing but the mode, the, the nonlance quotient of the most reducible unramified principle series, the Whitaker dimension is given by this. Okay? This is the universal permutation representation, and this is the sign representation of your 
of your vowel group of the left vein. Okay. So uh, why this is true is, uh, in fact, the analysis is already in the work of Kester Patterson. So, so the, so the important idea is, basically, this space is cut out by all those, uh, all those uh, finite many operators on the finite on the finite dimensional vector space. Okay. So the proof uh, is essentially you parameterize this <laughs> space. Okay. By using this, by using this equality, you will show that each orbit, okay, each vowel orbit inside this permutation representation will give you one dimension of this uh, space on the right hand side. That will give you one dimension for the left hand side. Okay. Uh, let me just give one example, which I hope might be uh, more interesting. So as I say, you you look at your uh, ramify uh, Regular principle series. Suppose you have the maximum reducibility point. It's the set of uh, you know, it's, it's the full set of simple uh, loops. Okay, it's it's very reducible. So now you have this. Uh, it is a standard module. You have this Lanlands quotient, and you have the unique sub representation. The sub representation will be this uh, analog of uh, Steinberg, and the quotient will be this uh, theta representation. Okay. So what will be the dimension? The dimension of this uh, Steinberg will be nothing but this, well, will be, a, will be this pairing, but this guy is a permutation representation. So this pairing will give you, it is nothing but the number of vowel orbits inside this uh, modular space, okay? And if you do the other pairing, if you compute the dimension of the theta representation, that will give you, it is, you are, count, you are counting nothing but the number of free orbits inside this uh, modular space. Okay. Of course, if, if a, a is one, then, well, you know, the standard is the unique uh, irreducible generic piece. Okay. Uh, I think there are some uh, consequences of this. For instance, one can conclude from here The well, if you if you have this condition, then your uh, principal series will be a uh, uh, will be in the Lanlands situation. So you will have this uh, to be the unique Lanlands quotient. It says nothing but this this Lanlands quotient is actually the least generic piece. Okay. If you take if you take your chi to be such that the set of reducibility is actually the full set of uh, simple roots. Then, as I say, this is nothing but the theta representation. Okay, but the theta representation corresponds to the one-dimensional representation of linear group. If you look at the parameter, okay. So this uh, this is what I mean by one-dimensional representations are you know the most uh, most non-generic guy. But I would like to highlight it's not true that in the linear case, of course, you have uniqueness of uh, vertical model. So you know the Steinberg is the only generic guy. Okay, you might want to say maybe for covering group, is it true the Steinberg is the most generic guy? Okay, it turns out it's not true. Okay, meaning it's not true uh, the Steinberg representation give you upper bound. Why? The reason is because if you compute the, if you consider the asymptotic behavior of this uh, dimension, okay, if you increase your degree of covering in the saturated class, okay, they actually this asymptotic formula tells you the dimension of your vertical space for this uh, constituent pi s is actually given by this uh, universal constant times the dimension of your castan lustig representation. Okay, for instance, here, here this, uh, for this piece, the, as I say, this, uh, this representation, castan lustig representation, for this will be nothing but this uh, trivial representation. This will be the sign, will be the sign, okay? These two, you don't have any choice, okay? They have to be the standard representation of your vowel group, okay? If you look at this picture, again, this, is, this will be giving you the trivial rep representation, and this will be giving you the sign, okay? okay? And this will be giving you uh, the Kastan lustig representation, but it may not be reducible, so what is that representation? That representation will be the standard representation, meaning standard meaning the usual reflection action on this two-dimensional vector space. Standard representation plus this character, 
uh, let me call it uh, two, such that this chi two takes value at uh, w two, sorry, uh, when I say w i, I mean w r phi. Uh, this character takes value uh, negative one at w two and takes value one at w one. Okay, that's the uh, unique one dimensional character of this uh, group for SP4. So this will be the cache stylistic representation there. So once you plug in this representation and you pair with the universal permutation representation, you will be able to compute the dimension for this uh, constitute. Okay? That's actually what I did, I believe. Okay, for S for for degree n cover of SL3. So you uh, by computing the root root data, you can easily compute that it is saturated. If only if this uh, n, the degree of covering is not divisible by three. Okay? It could be one, it could be two, but not three. Okay? In this case, you have this uh, modular space to be actually two copies of zero and z. Okay? Anyhow, as I uh, drew there, you could compute uh, all this castellistic, all these uh, cells, and you could compute the castellistic representation there. So this will be the formula for vertical dimension for each Irreducible constituent. Okay, as you could say, you actually get a concrete number for solidity check. You may just plug in n is one. I think you should get this is a uh, one. This is zero, zero, and uh, zero. Okay. Of course, if n increases, uh, it blows up. And and as I say, the most generic guy will be these two pieces. If you increase your n, well. For SP4, you could uh, carry out a similar story, do similar computation. Over there, you also have four pieces. Okay? You, you, you will get this. Again, you can, you can plug in and it's one. I'm sure uh, we should be able to get one, zero, zero, zero. Okay? And you could also say uh, this is approaching, the, is more or less proportional to the dimension of your Castellistic representation. Okay? You have that. Uh, but still, uh, I would like to ask uh, several questions uh, arising from this consideration. The first question is this. Well, since the, since the theorem or the formula I presented just now, right, it is really considering with, uh, with the dimension, uh, it is equal to the pairing of two vowel representation. But while this is a permutation representation, so you could specialize to each orbit, Okay, you could say, I look at the permutation representation of the vowel group on each orbit. Okay? So your right-hand side makes sense. So now the question is, what is your left-hand side? Okay? It turns out that you can define this, uh, this uh, so-called so uh, this uh, special component of the space of vertical functionals attached to every orbit, but the definition is not intrinsic. Okay. Uh, it depends on the, the actual intertwining operator and the induced map. Okay. But still, it's well defined, so you can define that. Okay. You expect that this equality is true. But it turns out this is uh, much harder. The problem is because this definition is not intrinsic. Uh, you cannot use the, you do not, you expect, but you do not have the exact, exact list of twisted jockey uh, modules. Okay. Another, uh, another situation is where if you consider, for instance, a covering group which is not saturated. For instance, if you consider the double cover of SO2, okay, it is not saturated. So in this case, if you consider your chi to be such that the reducibility, the set of reducibility consists of uh, one single point. Let's say the simple, uh, the simple root. You could consider uh, chi such that, uh, you know, Y chi is actually just a uh, R flat, okay? It turns out there are two chi's. I, I could call them, for instance, chi plus and chi minus. There are two unramified, regular, genuine characters, such that this is true, okay? There are two chi's, but each of which will give you, for instance, uh, if you consider chi a uh, sine, uh, or just I, okay? This will be reducible, and you will have this, uh, quotient, Lanon's quotient, and you will have this uh, Steinberg sitting there, okay? It turns out that uh, if you pick one of them, okay, in this case, the vertical dimension of the, of the principal series is of dimension one, 
Okay, so you don't have any choice for the distribution. It has to be zero, one, okay, for the vertical dimension, or one, zero. It turns out if you pick the right one, okay, the theta representation will be generic, and the standard is not generic. And if you pick the other one, okay, the theta representation will not be generic, and the standard will be generic. So in a case where it is uh, not saturated, it's quite uh, sophisticated, I should say. Okay, so uh, another question one can ask is, how about like ramify regular principles? Okay, what would be the substitute for this uh, permutation representation? At the moment, I have no idea. I don't know any answer for this. Okay, uh, even computationally, I don't know any uh, results here. Okay, so uh, this will be the first cousin of question I introduced uh, from the second slide. So the second uh, uh, question I would like to ask is, uh, for instance, right, we could be considering um, unitary unramified, unramified general character. Over there, what governs the reducibility and the irreducible constituents will be, of course, this R group. Okay? Over there, you have this R group. Uh, in this case, uh, we're considering unramified principle series. This will be actually Arvinian. So we'll be considering those uh, irreducible character of this uh, R group. And the irreducible constituents of the principle series will be parameterized by those characters of the R group. Okay? You, you could be asking, is the vertical dimension of each constituent also governed by this, uh, this pairing of uh, two representations? But now instead of the whole vowel group, you are restricting to this uh, R group. Okay? I would say uh, very much likely probably this is true. <laughs> but at the stage, uh, for lack of time, and, uh, I was not able to check for all. But I think I checked for uh, covering of SP2R. I think this holds. So there might be a big chance. I'm not sure in general. Okay? So, uh, but the, the, I want to remark that the reason I restrict to covering of uh, simply Sim semi-simple and simply collected is because uh, this, uh, uh, this work or observation coming from uh, Dennis Wu says that you cannot simply consider, for instance, covering of GRR. Or, you can consider covering of GRR, but not uh, covering of GST2R. Okay. Uh, over there, similar analogous equality does not hold it. Okay. So lastly, one could ask the general question, how about if you consider you know, your your principle series to be actually not regular and not unitary. Okay? So far as I know, I think we have not really understood the reducibility of arbitrary unramified principle series, even for linear algebraic group, uh, not to mention the characterization of the constituents. But once that is done, probably there is hope of uh, merging these two equalities, if they were true, together to uh, actually uh, compute the vertical dimension of arbitrary constituents. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.